This is the Rugby Odds, where an unlikely pundit panel of a wordsmith, a WWE legend, a rugby star, and a supermodel scour the globe, seeking best bets and bad behavior. Are you not entertained? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, oh yes, yes, I, I, I appreciate it. Thank you, much appreciated. You're great. You're absolutely great. But look, in the Sponsor Opportunity Green Room, you'll see WWE Hall of Famer John Bradshaw Layfield and the King Gift A. Bailu, inventor of words, prepping diligently for this show. And one glance at the Your Company Name Here slate will show you that we've got a lot to get to. So let's bring in John and Gift. Order was restored last week as yours truly took his rightful position at the top in terms of our triumvirate. But first things first, the records. And Oh, hell no. How about first things first, your travel? You're the worst travel person <laughs> since Jonah. Jonah was thrown overboard by the people that he boarded the boat with thrown into a well, and once the well ate him, the sea calmed down. You're the only person that has worse travel experience than Jonah. You fly to Chicago and take a bus back and get home two days late. So don't wooden spoon nothing but yourself, unless you can put wings on a wooden spoon and fly it to the next MLR championship. I took a bus to Indy, dummy, and then I flew to, to Newark. How many of you out there actually have taken, gone to Chicago and took a bus to Indianapolis and then flew some something like Rooster Air or something to fly back to Newark, not even to New York, so you can take a train in? And by the way, you took the subway and it broke down a block from your house, did yes, it or it did. did it not? <laughs> yes, it did. After an extraordinarily big woman that was working the turnstile <laughs> trying to get my card to work, and then she got stuck in the turnstile anyway guys you booked then, the hotel in chicago that was so bad you went and stayed with your buddy you're the worst traveler since jonah the wooden spoon this is a tough one because you know again i was at the top of the order top of the ladder that was picking over in the championship game when it went under no the under and the over were 47 points they were not 47 points it was 47 points you are absolutely making this up. 47 points. You are George Santos. I thought you were Jonah. You're George Santos. Oh, really? Well, how about you? Yeah. When I'm talking to him, Gift, on the phone, and I said, so last week, you know, before I check, did you, did you took, you took San Diego, uh, but you gave, you took the points with New England, right? So you covered it. And there's a little bit of a pause. And this is when you know he's lying. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, he's full of shit. He's lying through his you, And you then I had the to go hotel. I had to go check. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You booked a hotel that was so bad in Chicago, you stayed with a buddy. Do I think you have the cognitive ability to tell when, when I made a pick last week and I'm lying about it? Well, then you're no, just I, lying to the people. I took a very reasonable judgment call and thought, there's no way this dumbass will figure out I'm lying. I didn't know immediately. It was the, the it was the pause. You did, just, not. you did not. You said I'm gonna have to go back and look at the tape because you had no idea. No, no, false. I knew I had to verify looking at the where tape, and I called you, you on. You I said you were at. lying. How did you end up in a flea bag hotel so freaking bad, in Chicago? You had to stay with a buddy. This isn't the Travel Channel, okay? We're not golfing in Maine and then getting a delay. You're in a delay oh, right here's now. My, uh, here's my head cover for my my, my driver. See, it's a Maine Lobster. See. <laughs> Golfing in Maine, pal. I wish your head was right there because I would just, you know, <laughs> bam! The wife took out the golf clubs and started smashing things, not yeah. Tiger. Gift, you're fortunate this week in that you and John had the same record, and as per the wooden spoon, management suspiciously changed the tiebreaker from the rugby championship, which would have put John ahead of you, and instead they went with the NRL, where you were three and two, and John and I were both two and three in the NRL. So for that reason, John, you get Woody the wooden spoon. Yeah, I'm going to take it with me on my airplane when I'm flying <laughs> next because I'm not Jonah. You caught a case of dumbass on that bus is what you did. If there was a place to catch dumbass, it was on those buses and in those bus terminals. And it was America, though. And I was with the people. And for that reason, I am taking the walk of shame. 
That's right. My travel plans. I did it. It was my fault. It had nothing to do with my winning record here on the Rugby Odds, which these guys seem to forget is why we're on this show. But instead, mm -hmm. I'm getting the walk of shame because of my travel plans, and it's because of United and Priceline.com. Let's get to the rugby. Let's start with the Pacific Four. Uh, we all got the New Zealand versus Canada match right, but we all got the USA versus Australia match wrong because Australia destroyed the USA. Gift, you let us down the wrong path. The, the USA let us down the wrong path, you know? They, 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 they got the soil that they were on, and they let the foreigners come through, uh, technically while well, we were foreigners in Canada, but it doesn't matter. Let us come come through and show them up. So, you know, I can't be held accountable for my patriotism, all right? I, I put it out there. I put it out there. The king backed America, and America went up to Canadian soil and can, lost to the Aussies on Canadian soil. Soul? What is soul? We did our part. We backed America, the red, white, and blue. And blue. Uh, what is Canadian soul? It's Ottawa. <laughs> okay. Was Sri Lanka booked? Excuse me? I don't know. But, uh, was Sri Lanka booked? I, or like Eritrea, where they're having a civil war. I mean, wh why do they go to Ottawa? <laughs> Cheap flights. But was they all got canceled. Easy? <laughs> Just with their straight shot to Chicago, <laughs> Ottawa, Chicago, straight shot. straight shot. Again, they're making fun of my travel plans, ladies and gentlemen. Like this is a travel show. It's not. It's about making money, and that's what I do here. I'm very serious about making your money. These two clowns can try to distract from that by making fun of my travel plans, but we all know what the real deal is. Wait a minute, the guy that you have been a suck up to for the last 20 years, Stephen Lewis. <laughs> Got so fed up with you, he left you in D.C. You know, it might be you, Matt. Could very well be me. But you know what also is me? Really good picks on this show, including mm -hmm. another winner with the MLR final where you two had got different right. results. Gift, you got the game right, but you picked San Diego to win. John, you, despite I lying. never picked San Diego to win. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have this in writing and everything. It was you always wanna, New Did England. you watch last week's show? Yes. You picked it was San New Diego England. to win, but covered, but New England to be within the spread. That's what I you did. New England to win. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bam. Right, let's, go, let's go to the videotape. I will Kimbe you. No, no, no. Yeah, a lot of the young people out there know who he is. He's an NBA Hall of Famer. He built a hospital with his retirement money in his home country of Africa. He is a great human being. And if you don't know who he is, shame on you. Reach it. Gift, here's the video of you picking last week. San Diego to win. San Diego to win. I have this. There it is. Okay. Right there <laughs> on TV. You saw it on your monitor. You picked San Diego. I call AI shenanigans. He Fake got news. the game right because he said it was going to be close. He's 1-0 on the right. week. John, conversely, lied to me in the phone call. We knew he was lying. We researched it to prove that he was no, lying. No, you didn't know I was lying. Why did you research it? Because I knew, knew you I were lying. lying. You were lying about me lying. I don't want to get your lawyers calling me to sue me for not properly vetting it. Okay? So, indeed... John picked San Diego, and he picked him to cover the spread as well. How would they call you on the bus phone line? <laughs> so, John, what was your take on the match and the event? I thought it was a great match. I thought it was a great championship. I thought the guys played extremely well. I thought the, the rugby game was good. It was filmed well. I, everything about it. Congratulations to MLR. Congratulations to the Free Jacks. Those guys played great all season. Uh, we wondered if they were going to be able to match up against the, the Western Division. And when they got the opportunity, that they beat them. Uh, terrific rugby game, and congrats to the Free Jacks. Congrats to San Diego also for making the championship. I, I thought it was two, the two best teams in the league get, made it to the finals, and uh, New England came up on top. It was a great event. It was exactly what, if they had drawn it up earlier, what they would have wanted. Uh, Shaq was a lot of fun. The dropkick Murphys were great post-match. Shaq was, was posing for pictures with everybody. Couldn't have been nicer. The rugby on the pitch, though, couldn't have been better in terms of viewership, the people in the stadium, one-point win, drama, big plays, big hits. Ma'ananu being in the middle of everything. I met him getting on the bus, not the bus that I was taking, another bus. See, they were all taking buses. They were all taking buses, folks. But he still wasn't speaking. He had this glare, unfinished business look. He's coming back. You could bet on that on the Rugby Odds.
We're taking a quick break because we've run over on all your bull <laughs> antics. So we'll be right back after this. Need a great price on a new vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. Easy Price shows you our lowest prices on the Mid-Atlantic's largest selection. Find your best price online or at any of our 31 dealerships. It's easy at Sheehy. You need your cleats? You need them tomorrow? If you order today by 3 p.m. New York time or noon L.A. time, they can have them to you tomorrow. Young, old, male, female, if you're playing on turf, if you're playing on grass, if you're playing in the rain, you're playing in the heat, they've got you covered. RugbyNow.com. Go there now. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub. The Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street. All right, we're back, and we've had some uh, more bickering off camera. We'll get to that next week. But uh, we have the women in the Pacific Four Series gift. You gave us some misinformation last week. We'll see what you say this week. Right now we have New Zealand versus USA and Canada versus Australia. What about the Kiwis versus the Americans? Unless this USA team starts to get their sevens players back in, it's it's not going to be another close one. I said it last week. New Zealand is above and beyond everybody else on in this, in literally in the world. It's New Zealand at one, two, three, four through ten, and then you have Australia. Oh, you got to put England and France in there someplace, guy. New Zealand one through ten, oh, and boy. then England, and then. France, and then Australia. Somebody's looking at life through their black ferns colored glasses again. Absolutely. I, I've yet to still see them actually lose a meaningful game. An actual meaningful game with that roster on there. Just remember the San Diego Legion were on a 14-game win streak before they lost in the in the Super Bowl of rugby, Major League Rugby Shield final. Yeah, San Diego Legion didn't beat a team by 50 points, and that team go off and beat another team by 25 points, okay? <laughs> exactly. Who, who asked you anything? These were two good teams playing in a comp, in a championship game. Not even close to the same. I'm warning you not to interrupt Gift and me again. This isn't you and your golf buddies. This is a legit thing here, all right? I would love to put your head on a tee and John Daly your head. Is what I'd like to do. What, have a mullet, a mullet and a cigarette in your mouth and a beer belly? Great. I don't care what it looks like. I was going to hit your head with a driver. Gift. New Zealand is going to smash the U.S. It's it's not even going to be close, man. John, is- you've been bashing Americans the whole the whole show. You're going to bash them a little nope. further? I love America. I, look, I, I love America, and I love our team. We've got two chances against New Zealand. None and none. So you're going to pick New Zealand to destroy the Americans. A destroy is too kind of word. I think New Zealand is probably tired. I tell you what's better than you take America and I'll take New Zealand. I want 40 points. <laughs> no. All right, then we're not betting. All right. <laughs> Moving along. Australia versus Canada gift Canada at home in John's favorite town other than Manly in Australia it's Ottawa in Canada I don't think Canada is going to win but I do think this is going to be a much closer game than the US Australia won I think Canada had a little bit better of a warm up and clearly they don't have any of the distractions so I'm going to give this one to Australia I'd say it would be 25 okay and I'll give that actually to Canada in that one John are you awake no you better call the Ottawa Police Department because somebody going to steal this show and it ain't the Canadians. Them Aussies going to come in and they going to roll them ladies. That's what they're going to do. That's horrible. I am going with the ABC always beat Canada and I'm picking Australia to beat the Canucks. Let's move it along to the rugby championship. John, you and I were 2-0 and gift. You were 0-2 in the rugby championship. And uh, we're going to give you a chance to bounce back this week. I regret New nothing. New Zealand hosting South Africa in Auckland, New Zealand, minus 8.5. What do you think of this one, gift? This is a major rivalry game. Probably, I think, a bigger one than the Australia and New Zealand one. And I look at South Africa to actually keep it close to New Zealand. I actually think they will get the points on this game. I think the gift's point about picking Australia, Eddie Jones was a, a favorite by a lot of people to pick. 
The problem was he didn't have the horses that South Africa had. I mean, those guys were they, they were just a better athletes on that side of the ball than Australia. The, the guys guy looked like Don Morocco with his huge traps running down the, down the sideline. Nobody wanted to get in front of him. I mean, these guys were just these guys are terrific, big athletes in South Africa. So how does it translate to the New Zealand game? New Zealand, I think, wants to establish themselves as the best team in all of sports. This is going to be the uh, game that is just going to be physical. I, I, I can't wait to watch this. I think New Zealand, being at home, is the favorite in this for a good reason. I think New Zealand wins this game and probably covers. Wow. All right, I'm going to buck the trend here again. I think South Africa continues to get disrespected. South Africa is going to win the match in Auckland and stun the world. How about that, fellas? (laughs) Then we have Australia hosting Argentina. And again, it's a minus eight and a half for for the home team. Let's change it up and go with John first this time. I'm with Gift on this about Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones is a great coach, and he has turned a lot of programs around. He's going to turn his program around. He did not have the team or the manpower to step up against South Africa. He does against Argentina. Did he have the manpower in England, John? He did. He was one of England's winning as coaches of all time. Two years ago, how good was England? How good are they now? They were terrible in the Six Nations without Eddie Jones. Were those hypothetical questions? Am I supposed to answer those? I don't care what you answer. <laughs> when you guys take your noses out of Eddie Jones' ass, maybe John can pick this match. No, we got to talk about, hey, I tell you what, since Japan came in the World, Rugby World Cup, the way those guys tackled, I've been a fan of Eddie Jones ever since. I think Eddie Jones at home, they're going to win this game, and I think they most likely cover this. I would be betting Australia here. Okay. All right. What do you not like about Eddie Jones? I think he's a little bit overrated. He rides the hype very well, making himself a good, good living doing it. And uh, he's also a good character on camera. And he's a polarizing guy for a lot of people, which I think we need. So I like him in the game. But what makes him overrated? If he's actually seen the success and he's been consistent, the only thing he's missing is maybe a few wins here and there. But he's been in those finals. I, I guess it goes back to, like, what exactly is the overrated component there? <laughs> Uh-oh. Matt got stumped. I just had a flashback to the bus between Indianapolis and Chicago. Sorry. Okay. Eddie Jones is fucking great. He's going to win everything but the Rugby World Cup again. And he's going to buy the king and I a beer. If he sees you, Matt, he's going to he's gonna hit you in the head with his fist. Eddie Double respects boom. me. He respects me. He doesn't even know who you are. But if he did, he'd respect me. (laughs) All right, let's move along. Gift, (laughs) after that long diatribe by John about his boyfriend, Eddie Jones, what is your take on this match? Same feeling. Australia will bounce back against Argentina. Hey, what are you, picking Argentina, (laughs) sandpaper head? No, I'm not picking Argentina, uh, but I don't like that eight and a half points. Argentina always plays Australia tough. Australia coming off getting their asses handed to them. They better win at home. But this is where they have that banana peel match. This is what Australia does. Then the banana peel matches happen after you've won on something and then you look to lower your energy for the loss. Bam! They lost already, so they're coming in stronger. But it's also in a match where you're expected to win at home. (laughs) He won. The king just won. All right, Gift. You know what I'm going to do? You now? are an official peasant. I'm going to pick Australia because of you. Okay? I'm taking Australia to cover the <clears throat> points. Let's take a commercial break. We'll be right back after these words. America's longest running and most popular rugby show. The biggest names in Major League Rugby, MLR highlights, and big match previews. Rugby Wrap Up presents MLR Weekly, made in New York City. Well, hi, everybody. We're back. And uh, yeah, we're here with John Layfield and Gifte Bailu. I'm Matt McCarthy. How are you? 
Let's go to the PR7. Why are you talking in a stupid voice? I'm doing my <laughs> Harry Carey. Well, hi, everybody, because I was in Chicago uh, for about 75 days trying to get home. Hi, everybody. Let's get to the PR7's Western Conference Championships. You got the nickname of the team, but there's a men and women's t- uh, team under that umbrella. So let's go with the women's championship first. Who's going to win out of the Rhinos, Loonies, Experts, Retrievers, and Loggerheads? Gifty. For the women, I will say the Loonies. Mm. Honestly, that's all I got. He's picking the Loonies. Do you agree with him? Oh, he slipped the coin. Rhinos. <laughs> He's going with the Rhinos. I'm going to go with the Loggerheads. And how about the men, Gift? Uh, for the men, I'm going to go with the Experts. Shout out to my boy Corey Jones, representative University of Arkansas and Stanford or Yale and multiple other teams and multiple championship guy. Looking at them to take it up. I know they've been really hungry for this for a minute. John? <laughs> Damn, Rhinos. So you're going Rhinos men and Rhinos women. Yeah, I am. Okay. I'm going to go with the loggerheads. Captivating, <laughs> captivating, compelling television. All right, gentlemen, let's cross codes. Let's go to the NRL. And last week, Gift, you were three and two. John and I were two and three. Who do you like this week, Gift? Look, going for the next level of this, Warriors versus Sharks. Last week, it was Warriors Eels trying to be in the middle. Who's going to take it? And, of course, the Warriors completely slapped your Eels out the way. And I look at this. Bam! And look at what the Warriors are going to do to the Sharks. And, honestly, this is probably the slip-up game for them. Sharks have been completely dominating teams consistently, unlike the Eels, who had a little bit of a run. But, as I said before, inconsistent. Sharks are not that. Look for the Sharks to... Humble those Warriors with the one and a half points. All right, John. You got eels and roosters. Why don't you have lobsters? That's what you need. You need lobsters. That's, That's what, what manly should be called. <laughs> since we don't have lobsters, I'm going with the Broncos. Book it. All right. You're sticking with your Texas theme with the Broncos. I get it. I get Dang it. Dang right I am. I'm going to be in Texas this week where it's about 10 degrees hotter than hell. Okay. John, I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to pick your Sea Eagles to play the Cowboys tight. Ooh. And I think the Sea Eagles cover that spread there. Put that in your pipe and smoke at Layfield. Manly Sea Eagles. Are you talking about Manly on the bus? <laughs> That's not cool, bro. Why don't you take a bus to Manly? Not cool. That is not cool at all. We're down, unfortunately, to the end of the program, but we always leave with a bang and a bang for the buck in our pick of the week. Gift, who do you like? U20 championships are going on. Big shout out to the U.S. for absolutely killing it in the trophy matches. But in the U20 championships, you got South Africa taking on England. This is a big one. I know South Africa hasn't been as eclectic as they typically are, but they're at home. These young cats that are about to be making their way up into the nationals levels uh, with their the adult team, look for South Africa to absolutely take England on the, minor, on the plus five and a half, be able to show and upset the team to beat out there as i truly say anybody but england and i mean it king means it unlike you matt liar you know you could you could go to yourself okay i'm wearing a green shirt again to support ireland again john go ahead saint patrick should have kept the snakes and got rid of the irish that's what he should have done <laughs> How about that? You got two of the top four teams in the world playing each other this week down in New Zealand. And last week, New Zealand and South Africa, both of them rested a lot of key players, did not play them, put guys in to get them some experience, get them a couple of caps. They are going to go full bore this weekend. I think that's going to be the most physical game we've seen uh, in rugby year to date. It's going to be a great precursor going into the Rugby World Cup. And I think it's uh, something that uh, you need to tune in to watch if you love rugby. I think the total goes over. And I also believe that New Zealand probably wins this game. But after seeing those wings of South Africa, I wouldn't be surprised if South Africa pulls the upset. But I'm betting my money on New Zealand and the over. Uh, You'll see the way he does that, ladies and gentlemen. He likes to kiss the ass of both teams and then act like he's two great teams. These are two of the best four four teams in the world right now. The only other two teams is uh, France and Ireland. 
I mean, this this is going to be a heck of a rugby game. But you, so yeah, they both deserve to have their ass kissed. Okay. You kiss Steve Lewis's ass, whether he's winning or not. Fantastic. That's the general manager of Rugby New York here in the MLR franchise that John keeps Who referring to. Who left you in D.C. because he got so fed up kind of relationship that doesn't exist. Did anyway, he leave you in D.C. or not, yes or no? Aside from all of this nonsense, I'm going to go with a pick of the week. And my pick of the week is going to be in the U-20s gift like you. And I'm going to pick New Zealand smoking Georgia. In Georgia, and I and I picked that because Georgia has been playing very well, but New Zealand knows this now, and Georgia's biggest problem is that they are on the radar. So if you're on the All Blacks radar, whether it's under 20s or not, you are in big trouble, even if you're at home. So kudos to the Georgian program for building that up, but New Zealand's going to come in there and beat them by more than 15 and a half points. Everybody in Georgia hates you. Oh. Smart people in Georgia. I'm a Mets fan, and I hate the Braves. Gorgadza was in Georgia, right? That guy was an, an animal. And, yeah, good job. We got plugs, Gift? Definitely go check out Singapore to Tokyo any way we can. Get a quick reminder of what it takes to go to the Rugby World Cup and what rugby can actually do for people from a mission standpoint. And check it out at cseerugby.vhx.tv. Check it out. First two episodes free. <laughs> All right. And it is worth watching, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lot of fun. John? Singapore to South Africa. If you got a long like bus trip or something come up, <laughs> you might want to, to, to download it and watch it because it's awesome. <laughs> of course, I'm going to push M Memphis Inner City Rugby. You got to meet uh, with Shane Young this weekend in uh, Chicago, not in that horrible hotel that you stayed booked that you didn't stay in, and not with your friend that you end up mooching off of. And not the bus ride that you took to go down to Indianapolis or the cheap uh, off-brand airline that you flew or the train you took in from Newark or the subway that broke down one block from your house. But you did get to meet Shane Young, who's one of the most uh, best-run charities in the world, Memphis Inner City Rugby. Please check it out. And we will show the little clip that I have with Shane ripping you to shreds, John Layfield. Uh, so there'll be that. He can do whatever he wants. And I'm Shane's also great. Look, Shane, Shane is saving kids' lives. Shane is doing wonderful thing in Memphis. If he wants to rip me, Shane can do whatever he wants. I still love it. That's all going to get cut out. <laughs> the New England Free Jacks just won the MLR Shield Championship against the vaunted San Diego Legion. The no-name New England Free Jacks versus the star-studded San Diego Legion. But more importantly, I'm here with Shane from Memphis Inner City Rugby, changing kids' lives through rugby. And Shane, Shane, you work with John Bradshaw Layfield, the WWE Hall of Famer. How much of a jackass is JBL. I can't say much because he'll super slam me onto a mat, but I think, I think you got the right Onto idea. this mat, maybe. <laughs> okay, Layfield. And I'm going to plug the Can-Ams up in Saranac slash Lake Placid. You got to get to this tournament. It's an exceptional tournament. Come Once to you book their travel for them. And be there. On that note, I want to thank WWE Hall of Famer John Bradshaw Layfield, the inventor of words, King Gift Day Bailu. Thank you for tuning in. And please check out our other shows, including MLR Weekly, the College Rugby Wrap Up. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Join our weekly newsletter. And please sign up for our American Red Cross Blood Donor team. <laughs>